Welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway prairie tank. Part 17, cutting the holes in the smoke box and fitting the chimney parts. This is the lower part of the chimney and it's called the petticoat pipe. Its primary function is to focus the exhaust from the blast pipe up the chimney. On some miniature steam locomotives the petticoat pipe is a separate fitting that is attached to the main tube that supports the chimney. But in the case of this engine it's all in one piece. When I measure this tube, it's just over one and a quarter inches in diameter. I'm going to approach this episode in a very unengineering like manner. I'm going to use a simple commercial hole cutter like this. It's not the right size, I will have to enlarge the hole once I've cut it. Over now to the drilling machine to start the job. I made a bit of a mistake here. I doubted the mark that I made on the smoke box itself. As I held the smoke box in position on the top of the machine vise, it didn't look like it was in line with the seam at the bottom. However, this is not a problem. This smoke box has been rolled from a piece of brass sheet, and then the ends have been silver soldered together very expertly by Philip Blackgate's engineering. This silver soldered seam underneath is very neat anyway, but I would like it to be more or less in the centre for when I drill the larger hole underneath which accommodates the blast pipe and the steam inlet pipe. My hole cutter has done a lot of work and the drill bit is quite blunt, so I thought it would be a good idea to pre-drill the hole. Then I continued the job with the hole cutter once the drill bit had gone through the pilot hole. Because I'm drilling this dry, it's making a horrible squeaking noise, so I'm applying some steam oil to it. And now, when I reintroduce the cutter into the position it was before, you will notice that the squeaking has disappeared. On most of my machinery I keep the belts slack and when I put too much pressure on the hole cutter the belts slip. And rightly or wrongly I've found this to be a really good idea over the years to avoid injury to myself. If drills and things like this lock up I'm strong enough to hold the component and stop it from spinning. That's the chimney mounting hole cut, now I need to make it the right size. My first weapon of choice is a drum sander in my small electric drill. And this seems to work okay. It's very important to move it back and forth and this is to prevent damage to the drum sander by just sanding in one place. And because I'm constantly presenting a new surface to the metal, it cuts a lot better. There is another way to do this job and surprisingly it's very simple. It's a half round file. Some viewers may be thinking, what is he playing at? Why not machine the hole? Well yes, that would be a good idea. I could clamp it to the milling machine table and use a fly cutter. Or even a specialised boring tool. But please remember dear viewers, particularly the ones who complain all the time, these tutorial videos are made specifically for beginners. Many beginners do not have the machinery to do a job other than the way I'm showing. If you have a milling machine and the suitable clamps and the suitable cutters, then yes, that would be a good way to do it. But I'm doing it this way, which shows that everyone can do it and you do not need specialist expensive equipment. For me, saving time is always a consideration. I could use a fly cutter, like this one. I would have to modify the tool to cut the correct diameter hole and I would have to carefully clamp the smoke box to the milling machine table. And all of this takes a lot more time than the way I'm doing it. I don't recommend doing it this way, with a diamond cutter fitted to my Proxon motor tool, because it works loose all the time. This is OK though, it's a grinding wheel fitted in my small electric drill. Really, I was being lazy, I should have gone into the house where my larger, faster DeWalt drill is. But then I remembered the battery's flat, so I would have had to wait for it to charge up. To be honest though, this is working fine. In this clip you can clearly see pieces of metal being removed. Time for a bit more filing. Why am I going back and forth between different tools? Well, I get bored easily. Enlarging this hole did not take too long. It took maybe half an hour. Here's the final cut where I'm removing the burrs as well. And now the chimney mounting is almost a perfect fit in the hole. To confirm that the position was correct, I fitted the chimney. And here it is, sat perfectly on top of the smoke box. Time now for a quick bench clean using a broom. Here's a piece of brass that I removed from the cutter. 
Now it's time to cut the hole underneath the smoke box, which needs to be a bit bigger. The way I normally do it is to drill one large hole underneath the smoke box. And when everything's fitted together, I make a special plate which fits around the blast pipe and the steam inlet pipe, and with the help of a suitable sealant, makes this area of the smoke box airtight. The smoke box needs to be airtight at all times when you're running the engine. It is the effect of the exhaust steam coming from the blast pipe going up the chimney that draws the fire. But unless the smoke box vacuum is correct, the exhaust blast will not draw the fire properly and the engine won't steam so well. That's the bottom hole cut. You can see from this clip that the seam is not in the centre. That's because I didn't follow my gut instinct and drill the hole in the top part of the smoke box where I marked it in the first place. It's not a problem though because this is on top of the smoke box saddle, you won't be able to see it. In this clip I'm using the drum sander not to enlarge the hole, just to deburr it. When I sit the smoke box in position on the smoke box saddle, everything looks okay. Depending on the final position of the smoke box when I fit the boiler to it, I may enlarge this hole in the area where I made the felt tip pen mark, just so that it doesn't touch the steam inlet pipe. When I fit the boiler loosely in position though, it's looking okay. And that's about it, a very unengineering way of making holes in the smoke box. In model engineering, there are many different ways to do the job. And as long as the end product is to a good standard, that's all that matters. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.